Hi, my name is Bokhadr Ahmedov. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss how we can prove the limits using its precise definition. So we are going to consider two examples. So this is going to be the first example where we are going to prove that the limit of this function is equal to the t as x approaches to the 1. And also we're going to discuss about this function and we're going to prove that this function is going to approach the 5 as x approaches the 2. So especially this problem is going to be a little bit difficult because we know that this function simply doesn't exist at the x is equal to the 2. So let me first of all remind you what does it mean the precise definition of the limits or basically what is the definition of the limit. So we usually say that the limit or basically so the limit of this function is equal to the 2 means that this function the function 2 plus 4x over 3 gets close or gets closer to the 2 as x gets closer to the 1. So this is a rough definition of the limit. Okay, so it means that if I just get the x very close to the 1, then this function comes very close to the 2. So precise definition is involving controlling these distances. Essentially, we're going to control the distance between the function and its limit by controlling the distance between the x and the 1. So it basically tells you that, hey, if the distance between x and 1 is smaller than some delta f, then <clears throat> the distance to x plus 4 or 3 minus 2, so the distance between the function and its limit is becoming smaller than the epsilon. And there is a relationship between the delta and epsilon. So essentially, they are connected. So by just controlling the distance between x and 1, I can really control the distance between the function and, um, and, and, the, and its limit. So if it is possible to do, then the limit exists and limit is equal to the 2. So in order to prove, so usually we use the precise definition of the limits in order to prove the limits or in order to prove that the limit doesn't exist. So in this example, so we're going to prove the limit exists and we're going to do this in this way. So I'm going to simplify this expression. I'm going to write it like a 2x plus 4 over 3 minus 2. It is going to be equal to 2x plus 4 minus 6 divided to the 3. And if we give the common denominator it is, uh, uh, and if you simplify the term, it is going to be equal to the 2x minus 2 divided to the 3. We can take out 2 over 3 from the brackets. So 2 over 3. And the module is going to be x minus 1. It should be epsilon. So essentially, if I choose x minus 1 smaller than uh, epsilon times the 3 over 2, so if I choose the delta to be equal to epsilon 3 epsilon over t, then I can control the, the the limit of the function. So essentially, this is what I needed to get. So the equation of the delta is equal to the 3 epsilon over t. So we usually are going to write this in this way. So we say that, hey, if x minus 1 is smaller than 3 epsilon over t, then 2x plus 4 divided to the 3 minus t is going to be smaller than epsilon. So you see, so I can control this distance. So by controlling this distance, I can control the, this distance. So I'm going to do the similar thing for the second example. So we are given this function, and we need to show that its limit is equal to the 5. And we can do this by, again, getting this kind of equations. When we are going to control the distance between the function and its limit by controlling the, the distance between x and t. So essentially, we would like to write as if x minus t is smaller than the delta, then x squared plus x minus 6 over x minus t minus 5 is becoming closer than epsilon. Then what's the delta? So I, I need to explain or explicitly write down what is the delta. So I'm going to simplify the terms here for the second, for, for this equation. So it is going to be x squared plus x minus 6 minus 5x plus 10. So this is divided to the x minus t. So and then it is going to be equal to, uh, I can simplify the terms here out, it is going to be x squared um, minus 4x 
plus 4 divided to the x minus 2. And it's absolute value. And this is going to be equal to the x minus 2 in the square divided to the x minus 2 in the module. That is going to be equal to the model of the so absolute value of the x minus 2, right? And and I can I should make this smaller than epsilon. So, so I need to choose my delta to be equal to the epsilon. So essentially, if I choose x minus 2 smaller than epsilon, then x squared plus x minus 6 divided to the x minus 2 minus 5 is becoming smaller than epsilon. Okay, so in this case, our delta is simply equal to the epsilon. So when we are going to prove the limits of the functions using its precise definition, what you need to simply do is to derive the equations which are going to connect the epsilon and the delta. So in our next video lecture, we are going to show how to prove that the limit doesn't exist using its precise definition. Thank you very much. I hope that this was helpful for you.